And joining us for our halftime interview today is longtime public public dress announcer Greg Kerr. Joining us today. Thanks for taking some time away from your job to come up and talk to us. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, my pleasure. So. How long have you been the PA uh, announcer for the girls' games? You know, it's probably been, I don't, I don't have an exact number, but it's probably been four or five years now. You've had a few kids already going through, right? Yeah, we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got six of them, and the oldest is 21, so we still have a couple more to go. So when did you start, because take me through, walk me through the laser light show. When did it, when did it come about? How did it come about? Yeah, so... We had season tickets to the Cavs game a few years ago and uh, when LeBron was here. And I, I just loved the PA announcer and, and the opening kind of exercises that they went through with their, they had a, they had a uh, projection that went down on the court and I thought, man, isn't that spectacular? You know, how, how could we do something like that on a high school level? So I started checking into it and it cost the Cavs about a million dollars a year to do that. So I looked around, I thought, we probably can't afford a million dollars, but um, I found something for about a tenth of 1% of that. And um, I kind of pitched it to, uh, to the basketball coach, I pitched it to the volleyball coach, I pitched it to the, the um, athletic director, and you know, Amy Esser, she just was all over it and um, she found a way to, to fund it. We got it, and um, I worked kind of tirelessly at home to get it figured out. It was all brand new to me. And so now we have this, this laser show at the beginning of the game that we do, and we can use it for all kinds of things. It's, it really has put a, a whole new perspective on how Ranger basketball and volleyball is looked at. And um, the compliments just seem to keep rolling in from opposite teams fans, from our fans, from the kids. It's, it really has been a, a tremendous thing. And it's a program that you run off your laptop. It is, yeah. So I purchased a laptop just for the program because I wanted something dedicated to it so that we didn't have issues with, with the program bogging down or, or other things. Um, but it's something that doesn't have to be run, one, run on one computer. So with the system that I got, you can actually um, put it on as many computers as you want to, as long as you hook the, the hardware up to it, which would enable like a student run program to do it for free. There is no you know, monthly or yearly membership fee or anything like that. So that was really my plan and my goal was to get it, get it going and then turn it over to the students as like a, a club or some type of or, a video organization or whatever that could run it. And um, I've pitched it to a number of uh, coaches. I've pitched it to now, well, I haven't pitched it to our, our current um, athletic director, but the former, both former athletic directors I pitched it to. And they loved it, but nothing ever happened with it. So it's something that I'm still wanting to get, um, to get accomplished. Um, I just need a little support from from the school. Well, you know, hopefully, maybe there's a parent out there, you know, listening tonight. Maybe there, you know, there's a, a student out there who who will want to get involved. All it takes is one and uh, and get it going. But I think it's great. And I think the other half of it is, I I, I just love the energy that that you exude with with the uh, the uh, introduction of the lineups before each game for us. Yeah. So I I found myself. Um, going to work in my car, testing out um, music, and then running through the announcements in my car. So if you were a passenger in my car, you your ears would have been blasting. I can only imagine what the people around me as I'm going down the freeway um, thought that was going on in my car, you know? So I try to do a good job. I, I think it's fun. The kids seem to love it. The, the parents, seem to enjoy it and um i just asked brinley the other day um hey should we mix this up a little bit should we say your names a little differently like tell me how you how you want this to go and we'll we'll make whatever adjustments we need to make well and we did brinley kerr is your daughter but before because you have to get back down to your scores table i have to ask you about your tryout 
with the Cleveland Browns. What year was that, and uh, what happened? So that was pretty interesting. Um, in 1999, I, I was a pretty good high school football player. I was a pretty good athlete. Um, went to college and played at a small school out in Idaho. And then in uh, 1999, when the Browns came back, I was fortunate enough to uh, to have a tryout with the Browns. I actually was the only person that was on the, the practice field during this tryout. There was probably 12 coaches there, the quarterback coach, the receivers coach, and then several scouts. <clears throat> um, and I had a fantastic tryout. I didn't. I was a receiver. I didn't drop a ball. They said, wow, you look really good. How fast are you? And I said, well, let's just concentrate on how well I catch the ball. <laughs> and um, so they're like, come on, let's go run the 40. Well, I, I happened to be about two seconds of two tenths of a second slower than what they were looking for. But they did make the comment, hey, if you're about two tenths of a second faster, we'd have signed you. So it was a dream come true. It was really a, an awesome experience. It was cool to see the, uh, the locker room be in there, dress in the locker room, see all the players, names on the lockers. None of the players were there at the time that I was there, but um, it was a it was a cool experience. Did anybody get signed from that tryout? I was the only one, so really? no. Yeah, I was the only guy on the field trying out that day. Well, that is a that is a ball. Well, they can't take that. They could take. They got the two tons of a second, but they can't take that story away from you. Okay, we got to get you. Look, I got to let you know that you always get me at the end of the announcements with the last thing you say. I always step on you on the live streams, and I and I thought I had it figured out, but I did it again today. What's the last thing you say? Is it uh, protect the court? It is. It's Rangers protect this court. There. Now you get to hear it because I typically step on you every, every time you say it. Greg Kerr, thanks so much for coming up and talking with us. You do a fantastic job. And if anybody out there wants to get involved with the laser light show before the game, just stop in, you know, talk to Brindley, talk, you know, talk to Mr. Zendry, anybody. Just they'll find you and uh, we'll get that program rolling. Yeah, we'd love to do it. It, it would be great to teach somebody and pass the reins over and let them actually conduct the whole program. We're, that's, what, awesome. that's what we're trying to do with the live stream. Same thing. We want all student run. We want students involved. Mr. Kerr, thank you so much. Hey, you. All right, get back down there. Go Rangers. That's right, go Rangers. Greg Kerr, the longtime public address announcer for North Ridgeville High School girls varsity basketball and also had a tryout with the Cleveland Browns. Two tenths of a second. They don't mess around in the NFL. Two tenths of a second cost them a spot on the Browns.